How to edit duct in PractiCAD. PractiCAD offers a variety of ways to edit the duct as you're working. You can edit individual pieces all the way up to entire duct lines. Virtually everything in PractiCAD can be edited on the fly. The following set of tutorials is going to show you the various ways to edit duct and the different techniques you should use in different situations. Part one of duct line editing is how to edit a single fitting. There are two ways of doing this in PractiCAD. First, we can do it from the AutoCAD property box, and second, we can do it from the Edit Fitting command. To access the AutoCAD property box, all you need to do is double click on the entity in the system. You can also click on the entity once with the left mouse button, and then right click as we're doing here and select Properties. That'll also open up the property window. Once you do that, you'll be able to see all of the properties inside the ACAD property box related to that entity. For example, if we would like to switch the width in to 32, we can just simply type in 32 and hit enter and the duct will change. Here we're going to take depth and type in 24 inches and we're going to hit enter. Now you can notice that the duct is changing and the tags are changing along with it. You can see here we have elevation tags as well. The duct line grows from the center line of duct. So when we change the depth, you can see that the duct's depth changed above and below the center line, therefore changing the elevation what was bottom 5 foot to 4 foot 9. To change elevation, all you need to do is click on the duct, go to your elevation box, and here you will see all of your choices listed. You can see bottom of duct at 4 foot 9. Just simply type in whatever elevation value you want here. Here we're going to do five foot, and you can see that the tag has reflected the change and the duct has raised up in elevation. So for anything in the AutoCAD property box, all we need to do is double click on the fitting, go to the AutoCAD property box, and then make the change. You can do this 100% of the time for every single property unless a property is locked. And this we go over in further tutorials. The second way to edit your fitting is to use the edit fitting command that PractiCAD provides you with. In this tutorial, we're going to close down the AutoCAD property box and we're going to look at our fitting. We're going to left click once with the mouse and then right click and go down to the option that says edit fitting. If we choose edit fitting, PractiCAD will open up its edit fitting window. Here we can choose different views for the entity we're holding. We can zoom in and zoom out either with standard wheel mouse commands or the pan, zoom, and orbit buttons you see here. And all we need to do is basically choose the parameters we want. For example, I can roll with my wheel mouse up or down to select a different within, or I can keypad in the number 40 and it will change. Notice that next to every single parameter, we've got locks, that can be locked or unlocked. Here you can see we have connector in and out as TDF and TDF. They were initially locked. If something is locked in this window, you will be unable to change it from the AutoCAD property box. For example, if we do go back and click on these little locks to close them, we can change any parameter you see here in the AutoCAD property box, but we'll be unable to change TDF. Once we've made the changes we want, we're going to press OK. PractiCAD will exit out of that window and make the change. To demonstrate how parameters are locked, we're going to double click on the fitting and we're going to come into the AutoCAD property box where it says TDF. And I'm just going to try to change it here from TDF to SND. Notice the second I do that, PractiCAD changes it right back. That is because the property is locked. If something is locked, we must click on the fitting again right click, go back to edit fitting, and then unlock those parameters and press OK. If we do that, now from the AutoCAD property box, we can change any single parameter we want. Here you can see we've switched the connection to S and D. In this segment, we're going to explain the different fabrication levels PractiCAD offers. We're going to click on our duct here and then take note in the AutoCAD property box underneath technology properties, we have a place for fabrication level. 
you will notice that Practicat offers three fabrication levels, cut and label, label only, and order. Dependent upon which fabrication level your duct work is in, it can have a role in how your duct edits. The first one, cut and label, basically means that this duct is going to go to the plasma cutter. Therefore, it's not going to follow any standard set of rules for finished length with coil line, which is what label only is for. It's simply going to mean that whatever properties you put in, Practicat is going to accept them. For example, we've switched to fabrication level to cut and label, and now we're going to come over here and change the connection to slip and drive. Notice when we switch it to slip and drive, it does not affect anything else. It doesn't affect the length in particular. If I come over here and decide to switch the length to 45, it will automatically adjust the fitting to fit exactly what it is we've typed in. So cut and label means we're going to fabricate this fitting, send it to the plasma, and it shouldn't follow any rules in terms of default stock length. However, now we're going to switch the fitting to label only. Note the second we switch it to label only, that Practicat has readjusted the length of the fitting. And the reason why it's currently at 57 and a half is because we have half TDF and half slip and drive. We're actually losing two inches from a 60 inch default stock length fitting. We're losing two inches for the TDF and a half inch for slip and drive. What we're gonna do is switch them both to TDF. Notice the second we do that, that the length adjusts. What label only means is that first, we should send this fitting down to a sheet shear list or download it to a coil line. And second, it means that it should follow the default stock options you have selected in your library ductwork options. To show you where that is, again, we're going to click on library. And then we're gonna go over and click on the word ductwork. Notice here we have use default stock length, it's checked. And for rectangle, we have 60 inches. If you choose label only, Practicad will make sure that as you change connections that the finished length of the duck meets this stock length. If you change it to 48 inches, it would adjust to that. Currently it's on 60. So what we're gonna do is exit out of the library. You'll notice by clicking on the duct and coming over to the AutoCAD property box, now if I make any change to the connectors, for example, we're gonna switch the connector in to slip and drive, and then the connector out to slip and drive, you can see that this customer has it set to lose a half an inch on each side, so our finished length is gonna be 59 inches when we're done, but it's coming from a 60 inch default stock length. Now, it will stay on label only up until you make a change to your length. For example, if I come up here currently and I take length and switch it from 59 inches and I change it to 44 inches and hit enter, Right there, you'll notice that Practicat says you are not following the default stock length and therefore we're gonna switch the fabrication level to cut and label so it sends it to the plasma. If I switch it back to label only, Practicat will re-edit the fitting and make sure that based on the connections that it meets the default stock length. So you can choose between cut and label and label only. This shift will most of the time be automatic. However, you can choose to change the fabrication level at any time. The last and final fabrication level is order. Order simply means that we would like to download this to Practicam and possibly get a report. We don't wanna send it to the plasma, we don't wanna send it to the coil line, it's just an ordered entity. Often, whenever we create catalog items like Hedos or stamped elbows, things we're purchasing, we set the fabrication level to order. Quite often, we use order as a condition to make sure we don't download something that should not be 
fabricated or should be fabricated. So this is the explanation of fabrication level. Once again, cut and label means follow any parameters we put into the system. Changing connections will not change the length. We're going to send it to the plasma. Label only means that if we go to make any change, for example here we're going to switch to TDF and TDF, it should auto adjust the length to meet our default stock length and it should download to a coil line or to a sheet shear list. And last we have order only. Order only will have no effect on the fittings parameters. It's used generally to pick off duct that should be purchased or to download stuff to Practicam that would get reported but not be fabricated by plasma, coil line, or spiral machine. Another way to edit inside Practicad is to use the stretch nodes that we provide. If you go to click on a piece of duct, you will notice that Practicad will provide you with three different nodes. First, we always have the blue square node. This represents the side of the duct or the hole point that Practicad has listed in the fitting parameter box. For example, here you can see in the fitting parameter box under the fitting tab, it says we're holding it by the in and therefore the in will be the blue square. If we were to switch it to the out, you can see that the blue square will switch. Now on the opposite side of the blue square is always an arrow that points in which direction we're capable of stretching the duct. For example, if I would like to stretch the duct, I can click once with my left mouse button, pull it in the direction we want, and click again to release, or you could click once, hold it in the direction, you can see it's 70 inches. We're going to type in 15 and hit enter. So you can type in a numerical value and it'll stretch the duct in that amount. So if we would like to then take the duct on the opposite side and shrink it this way, we'd have to come up to the fitting parameter box. We'd switch the node so that the arrow is on the other side. You can see here now we're holding it by the in. So we're capable of stretching it by the out. And now I'm going to pull this arrow in this direction. I'm going to type in 25 and hit enter. Okay, so we can edit in either direction. The last node you see are the double arrows. The double arrows have one specific function to move a fitting or piece of duct up or down the order it is in a duct line. For example, here you can see we have a little 18 inch piece of duct. We're going to click on it. Then we're going to hold down with the left mouse button and we're going to drag this fitting to the right. Notice that it snaps to the next joint. If we now click on the button again and release, you can see that Practicad will move that fitting over. So if we wanted the little joint to be close to the elbow, we could just grab the node, hold it in the direction we want, click again to release, and now we've got that particular fitting all the way down the duct line. And this should work for virtually any fitting in the software. In the next section of duct line editing, we're going to show you how to use the specification by geometry option inside Practicad. Specification by geometry is an option we have underneath your library icon in your Practicad ribbon or express toolbar. Underneath your ductwork options, you can see under duct line editing, we have an option called specification by geometry. Currently, it is unchecked. The recommended settings for Practicad, though, are that it should be checked at all times. However, in this tutorial to explain what it does when it's unchecked, we're going to leave it like this for now. We're going to exit out of my library and take a look at the fitting we have on the drawing. Notice that this fitting is in the 2 inch water gauge specification, and for this tutorial, that specification calls specifically for TDF connections on the in and out. The way specifications work inside Practicat is once you give a specification and assign it to a piece of duct, that specification is active 100% of the time, which means that when you go to edit the duct, Practicat will reapply the specification. What specification by geometry means is that when it is unchecked, any change to any type of property 
will force Practicad to reapply the specification, meaning we have geometry type, technology type, and identification type parameters in the software. If that button is unchecked and we make any sort of change, each time we make a change, Practicad will reapply the specifications. For example, let's go and take the connector in and switch it to slip and drive. Then let's take the connector out and switch it to slip and drive. Currently, we've now changed the fitting so it's slip and drive and slip and drive. Even though the specification calls for TDF parameters. Now let's exit off by letting go of the fitting and reselect it later. Now we're going to come over to the technology properties and we're going to switch acoustic liner and change it to one inch acoustic. Notice the second we do that, Practicad has reapplied the two inch water gauge spec so therefore we now have the TDF connections that our specification table called for. Most contractors if they go to add liner or change an accessory or a technology parameter don't want Practicad to reapply the specifications. So what we do is we go back into the library icon and go to the ductwork section. Here we are now going to check the specification by geometry parameter. Once again, this is the recommended setting. We're going to hit the save key and then exit out. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click on the fitting and we're going to undo what we just did. We're going to take away the liner and then we're going to switch the connections back to slip and drive and slip and drive. Now, even though the specification is calling for TDF, I could let go of the property box, reselect the fitting, and now if I make a technology parameter change or an identification parameter change, Practicad will not adjust these connectors. For example, we're going to come into acoustic lining and we're going to choose one inch acoustic lining. Notice that the locks or connections did not change because we only changed a technology parameter not a geometry parameter. However, if we come in here and now change the depth of the fitting from 20 to 22 and we hit enter, you can see we've now changed the geometry parameter. So Practicad has reapplied the specification table that was assigned to this duct. This is a very important option to make sure that you don't make one change to your fitting and then when you go to make another change to your fitting, it undoes the fitting change you just made. So this is an option we recommend keeping checked. However, it is always a matter of draftsman preference. In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to utilize the editing feature specification by new duct only. This option was designed so that you will only have Practicad apply specifications to duct at the time duct is placed on the drawing. However, once you go to edit the duct later, it will not reapply the specifications. For example, currently we have a duct line which we drew with a 2 inch water gauge specification. You can see that it's calling for TDF connectors. What we're going to do is we're going to make a change that goes against what the specification is calling for. And the change we're going to make in this tutorial is we're going to take the connector out. We're going to switch it to slip and drive. So what we have now is a connector in the middle of this duct line that is actually not what the 2 inch water gauge spec table calls for. We've changed it to slip and drive, but Practicad, the spec that it was under, says it should be TDF. Now if this option specification by new duct only is unchecked and we're going to go into where that is in a minute, what will happen is if we go to change the duct line, anytime we go to make a change, for example here we're just going to say within will be 30, you can see that Practicad has now reapplied the specs to all the duct on the line or all the duct that was changed. Therefore, you can see that the spec table called for TDF and it added TDF the second we made a change in size. However, if we would like to change this option off, we can do so by adjusting an option underneath the library icon. What we're going to do here is we're first going to undo the edit we made.
so that we've got the duck line with TDF connections. And here you can see once again, we have the slip and drive. We're going to go into the library icon on the Practicad ribbon. On the left hand side, we're going to go into ductwork options by clicking on the word ductwork. And all of your ductwork options will open up. Currently under duck line editing, at the bottom, we have here an option that says specification for new duct only. Now this is different than specification by geometry only. What this does is if it's checked, PractiCAD will only apply specifications at the time you place duct down. After that, it will not reapply specs regardless of any change. That is different than the option for geometry, which applies specs if a geometry parameter has been changed. However, this option will never reapply the specifications at any time. You would have to uncheck it in order for PractiCAD to reapply specs. So what we're going to do for this tutorial is check the option. We're going to hit the save key on the left hand side and we're going to exit out of library. Now we're going to go back and just double click on the first piece of duct in this duct line. And once again, we're going to change the width to 30. Now notice that we have a slip and drive connection. And we do know that the 2 inch water gauge spec we're using here does call for TDF. However, because of the option we have checked, if we change this to 30 and hit enter, you can see that PractiCAD edits the whole line. It does change the width of all of the entities, but it has not changed any other properties. Therefore, the slip and drive has not changed to TDF. So you can choose to keep the option on specification by new duct only. How to use your allow incompatible connectors option. Practicat has an option that makes it impossible for you to make a change to the duct line that will have two connections that do not belong attaching next to one another. For example, TDF and slip and drive are generally what we would call incompatible connectors. Therefore, Practicad should stop us from allowing us to make a TDF connection attach a slip and drive connection. You can see currently we have two pieces of duct on the drawing. We're going to click on this duct right here and then we're going to go into the AutoCAD property box and you can see that it is a TDF connector on the out. What we're going to do is then click on the fitting next to it and take a look at the connection on the in. You can see here that the connector in for that fitting is TDF because TDF and TDF should go together. If we now come and change the connector in of this fitting here and switch it to slip and drive, notice that PractiCAD has changed the connector out of this fitting to slip and drive as well. What it's done is it went through the libraries in our allowance section and found what connector is supposed to be compatible and it changed it. If we would like to disallow this option so that we can put a TDF connection and attach it to a slip and drive, we need to change this in our ductwork options. To get there, we're going to go into the library icon on the PractiCAD ribbon or express toolbar. And we're going to go to the ductwork options by clicking on the word ductwork here. Here you can see there is an option that says allow incompatible connectors junction and currently it is unchecked. This is the recommended settings for PractiCAD. Because it's unchecked, what PractiCAD is doing is when I go to make a change to one connector, it goes and finds the compatible connector and then changes that one. So it'll usually adjust two fittings at once. However, if I check this button and then hit the save key to allowing compatible connectors, now when I go into this fitting and I switch the connector out from slip and drive to TDF, you can see that PractiCAD has not changed the fitting it's attached to. We actually have a slip and drive and TDF connection in the system. Now this is disconnected. However, PractiCAD is allowing this to happen because we have that option checked. Once again, the recommended settings are to keep that button unchecked at all times. If we go back into library and we go to look under the allowance section, here on the left, when we go down to allowances, we can open up by hitting the little plus key 
and we can click on the word connector. Now there are separate tutorials on how to make things compatible and incompatible and they are controlled here. But basically that option, if checked, will allow you to put two connectors together that don't belong together. So it's recommended to go into ductwork, go to allow incompatible connectors junction, uncheck that, save it, and leave it there on most drawings. That concludes the tutorial on allow incompatible connectors.